So looking at the consoles master section, the master control section now, it's quite substantial. We've gone from a small format console to a large format console almost by including such a large monitoring section, master section in the middle. Yeah, this section really sets the console apart from many other small format consoles. We wanted to deliver big studio features and sound quality with the 8424. Now up at the top, we have two large backlit VU meters. These are really accurate for mix metering, and these can be set to meter either your main mix, any of your auxes, all of your mix bus signals. We even have two VU meter outputs at the rear of the console. So if engineers have their own large VU meters, they can hook them up to this console very easily. And we've got the reverb returns that you mentioned earlier as well. Yeah, so these can be used for returning stereo effects into the console or as additional stereo inputs if required, taking the total console input count to 52. Now, each of these has its own level and balance control, and it can be isolated from the solo system, allowing me to hear effects processing while I solo console channels. And a two Q send as well, that can be used to send effects to the performer, to the artist. Yeah, so that send is independent of the main reverb level control. So singers can drown the vocals in reverb while they're performing and it won't affect the main mix. And I can see these can be routed to the groups as well. Yeah, this allows you to take advantage of the group processing and direct outputs, meaning that I can print reverb tracks into the DAW. And in that way, I can layer real outboard effects as tracks in my DAW. And I can see we've got some master controls here as well. Yeah, so I can activate all AUX buses here, switch them globally to pre or post fader, solo them individually or as pairs or groups, and choose global console inputs. So over here, we have some of the global console controls. The 8424 has three solo modes, solo in place, AFL and PFL. So again, these are features that we'll find on large format consoles. You know, you've got the destructive and non-destructive solo and options. Yes, and you can activate that globally or in a channel by channel basis. Each channel can be isolated from the solo system, placing it in AFL mode. And this is perfect for soloing when you're recording. So it maintains your direct outs and your mix outputs. And the AFL bus also has Mariner transformers for precise voltage soloing. The AFL bus can be switched to PFL globally and it's great for auditioning, recording inputs and finding any problem signals. And when you're mixing, solo in place can be used to hear channel signals isolated in their stereo position with all the mastering processing retained. I can also globally reset any console solo with the reset button at the top here. Okay, so here are the four groups and stereo mix faders. And it looks like we've got some processing here as well. Yeah, we have a two band shelving EQ on each group and stereo EQ on the mix bus. And those center frequencies are at 220 hertz and 10 kilohertz. Oh, that's going to be great. So if I send all my drum tracks to group one or two, I can use the low shell to add some weight. And I can use the top shell to bring out some of the hats, some of the cymbals, some of the snap of the snare, for example. Yeah, exactly. And we have that same EQ on the stereo mix. So you can use that for just sweetening up a mix slightly or removing any problem low end. And we also have the stereo width function. This is the same that is featured on the Genesis consoles and on our 88R. And having this function enables you to widen up a stereo mix, such as if you're working with an acoustic act with minimal microphone sources, you can widen that to an enhanced stereo image, or you can sweep all the way down to mono if you're doing some club mixes. And it's a sweepable control, so it's very useful for many types of uh, music. And I take it each of the groups and stereo mix has its own inserts as well. Yes, yeah, so we have switchable inserts that can be pre or post fader, as well as direct outputs on all groups and stereo mix for recording back into the DAW. Cool, so if I want to add a 33609 into this, I can then use the faders to drive the signal into that compressor. Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility here as to how you want to process your audio. You can uh, have the inserts post fade or pre fade and customize your mix bus chain. And talking about customization, we've also got these two 500 series slots underneath. Yes, so we have the 500 slots over here in the master section. At the moment, I have these loaded with 2264 ALB compressors, but any 500 unit is compatible. Now, what I can do with these slots is I can choose to use them as a stereo mix insert. At the moment, I'm using this as a mix bus compressor. But I can also send those 500 slot units over as inserts to any of the four mono groups. 
And since they have their own input and output on the rear of the console, I can choose to hard patch them as inserts into any of the other channels or just use as a standalone rack. And they can also be used as inserts into my 1073s or DI inputs for creating a customizable recording chain. So that makes it really, really flexible. Now, can you just take me through some of the monitoring options as well? We mentioned this earlier. So here we have the control room monitor section of the console. This really is a large format uh, feature because we have quite a lot of routing options that you, you don't usually get on small format consoles. We have three external signals on this console, one stereo XLR input, which is great for auditioning your DAW mixes back through the monitors. And we also have a 3.5 millimeter mini jack input that connects at the front of the console here. Okay, so that's great. So if a singer shows up uh, with a home recording or even a reference track on a phone, we can play that through the monitors. Yeah, so not only that, you can feed that external signal into the performer headphones so that they can check reference tracks while they're performing in the live room. So if they have a vocalist they really want to sound like or some lyrics that they need to remember, that can be fed into them really easily without them having to come back into the control room. Okay, you mentioned three, now what's the third one? So the third comes in the form of a mix bus inject feature. Now this, this lets you bring in an external signal and feed it not just to the control room monitor section, but you can feed it into the stereo mix bus. So that can take advantage of the Mariner transformers, any of your mix inserts and your EQ and your, your width function as well. And we've got some more monitoring options as well, like course, we've got dim, we've got mono. Yes, and the dim pot runs down to minus 35 dB and it can be controlled either from the button or from a foot switch, as can the talkback, return talkback and cut. And this feature is really useful for when you're communicating with your performers and you just want to reduce the level a little bit in the control room. And how many loudspeakers can we connect to the back of this console? We have three loudspeaker outputs on the console, giving large format monitoring capability. Each has its own calibration level attenuator and the M2 speaker output has the added bonus of being used as a dedicated return talkback speaker. So your return talkback listen mic can come back in to M2 speaker outputs so you can maintain a constant communication with the live room while you're still mixing and monitoring. And this screen here, that's just for display and trim levels as you were showing earlier. No, this services screen actually allows a host of different features, uh, routing and switching options, as well as being an integral part of the 8424's save and load recall feature. So you just mentioned recall, does that mean all the pots and faders can be reset as well as the trim? It does. So users can take advantage of this onboard recall system. We can save a session, load it back up at a later date. All of the trims, as I mentioned before, are, are automatic and all the switches such as your aux, ons, pre-state, they're all fully automatic. And then we have a, an onboard recall program that allows you to manually reset all of the pots and fader positions very quickly. Okay, so talk me through the recall. So we have an internal recall system, which allows us to save and load um, console state. So if I choose to load, we have 99 internal stores. So I'm gonna to choose to load number four. And what that's doing is it's automatically loading all of our switch settings, all of the trims are all fully automatic and they happen instantly. And then it asks us if we want to start the manual fader recall. So if I click OK, that you can see that it starts to scan the channels and it's looking for anything out of place. So if you just want to move the fader to channel nine, yeah. So then you can see that it's paused on channel nine. The auto scan has found a fader position that is out of place. If you just want to adjust that, now you can adjust the level until it matches the console store. And now it goes back into automatic scan mode. So it's scanning the entire console and the master section to see if anything's out of place. Now, what if I just want to recall a session really quickly and dial in a, maybe a little bit more reverb? Can I, do I have to do this, but I have to load up the entire session again, or can I just load up one channel? So yes, you, you can use manual recall on a single channel. So if you press the solo on any channel, now you can see there that rather than automatically scanning the entire console, the recall is just focusing on channel nine. So it gives you all of my channel nine settings, such as my aux sends. You can see that they're all matched there. If I just move the fader out of position. Now, as I scroll through, you can see that it has found that the fader is out of position from the console store and I can pop that back in. And then to exit, just press the solo button again 
and then it goes back to auto scan mode. So you can choose which channels you want to recall or you can do the entire board and you can exit at any time with the home button. So this, this allows you to save a number of sessions within the console's internal memory. So if you have a band that wants to do several mixes and then come back at a later date to return to those mixes, you can load them up in the console store system there. Now, is there any way to archive these stores, for example? Yes, uh, we plan to have an update coming in 2020 that will allow you to connect the console to a computer uh, to be able to archive these stores, save them on a computer, rename them, uh, save them along with your DAW session and then reload them into the console whenever you need them. So that's going to save me a lot of time when working on multiple projects. It is, and th this is a feature, again, that usually large format consoles have. You don't see this on small format consoles in, in hybrid studios, and it allows this pure analog console to integrate further into the modern hybrid workflow by enabling you to save settings and restore them at any time.